the law of prayer of agreement. Now, this law has been used incorrectly for so long. So we want to shed some light on it. The law of agreement in Matthew 18 and 19. Again, assuredly, I tell you that if two of you will agree on earth concerning anything that they will ask, it will be done for them by my father who is in heaven. All right, so here's the first question. What word are you agreeing on? Because many feel that they can, okay, come on, let's touch a degree, let's touch a degree, let's touch a degree. Uh, we're gonna deal with that in a minute too. Let's touch and agree. What, what word are you agreeing on? Whatever word that you're agreeing on, it must already be established in heaven. When that word is established in heaven, we can speak that word as legal agents in the earth, agree that with that word, speak it back to the Father, and that's the word that he's going to bring to pass. We've been, uh, let's, let's, let's agree on this, and it's going to happen. That's what it says. Is it already in the word? Is it already established? Okay, because the Father is only obligated to his word, his word will not return void. So the word reminds us that one can chase a thousand and two can chase 10,000 demons to flight. Can you imagine the power of agreement? When we agree according to the word, the father is not going to let his word fall to the ground. So let's look at another question dealing with the law of the prayer of agreement. So how does it work? Let's look at Matthew 18, 18, just moving up a little further, moving up. Okay. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So this is going to help us because number one, look, is sickness legal in heaven? Well, it's not legal on earth. So I can agree with you. I can agree that this sickness is illegal, unlawful. So I can release healing in your life. Number two, is healing lawful in heaven? Well, we just said it. Well, healing is lawful in heaven. Therefore, I can release healing here on earth. Number three, is revelation knowledge legal in heaven? Well, yes, revelation knowledge is legal in heaven, but so it's legal on earth. So here we have binding and loosing. I can remember times when we were binding and loosing and loosing and binding. And did we bind it? Did we loose it? Did we loose it? Did I remember to loose it or did I bind it? What? 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 were we doing? Uh, yeah, uh, it has to already be legal in heaven. If it's legal in heaven, I can legally release it here on earth. If it's illegal in heaven, it's illegal in earth. So I, on earth, so I need to make sure as a kingdom ambassador, when I agree with someone else that I'm agreeing with what the father has already said. All right, let's go back to our notes. So number four is saying, is poverty legal in heaven? Absolutely not. So we disallow the spirit of poverty here on earth. Is unbelief legal in heaven? See, these are methods of, and um, principles that we can apply dealing with prayer. When I agree that it is illegal on earth, uh, when when we agree that this thing is illegal on earth, we can release it from its assignment. And this is what we do as ambassadors. No unbelief can dwell in my belief system. Okay, so let's look at this, mis uh, just two misconceptions of the prayer of agreement. One, he, he will give you anything that you pray for. Well, it said that he'll give me whatever, if we touch and agree, he'll give me what we pray for. 
So let's let another scripture bear witness of what the father was conveying. And let's look at this in Yochanan Olive 3. He said, dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before Elohim and receive from him anything we ask. Okay, now close your scripture up. Good, let's go pray. No, do not stop there. <laughs> Don't stop. Keep reading. Because we keep his commands and we do what please him. So when I pray and I pray and agree, I am praying his word. I'm not just praying what I want. I'm not praying what I want. I'm praying according to what has already been established in heaven. All right, so let's take a look at it. That was one uh, misconception. And then number two, you got to touch somebody. Where did that come from? Come on, come on. The Bible said we need to touch and agree. Stop touching people. <laughs> Stop it. Stop touching people. It's talking about being unified. It's talking about being with one accord. We are unified in our prayer as in having the same purpose, same mindset, same precepts of the Father. Quit touching people. That's right. I said it. Okay, so let's look at this. The greatest act of obedience and submission is hearing the word of Elohim and obeying it. The centurion told Yeshua, you don't have to come to my house to touch my daughter. I'm not worthy no how. Just speak the word only. So when we pray, we are to speak the word only. Does that mean we don't believe in laying your hands? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the misconception that we got to touch. Come on, touch as a point of contact. Touch the screen. Just stop. Stop touching. Okay. When you pray, speak the word only. Believe what the word says. Join us every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central for a power-packed teaching on prayer followed by corporate prayer.